Hi everyone, today we will be predicting the weather using Pandas library and regression model from scikit-learn library. We will be using Google Colab for this project, which is a hosted Jupyter notebook service that requires no setup to use and provides free access to computing resources. If you do not have a Colab account, you can create a free account by signing in with your Google account at colab.research.google.com. I'll put this link in the description box below. I will show you everything step by step. I'm sure this will be fun and helpful project to you. If you stick around until the end of this video, you will be able to build your own weather prediction model with machine learning so that you can add it to your resume or portfolio and even show it to your potential employers. Before getting started, I would like to say that I would really appreciate if you could subscribe like and click on the notifications bell to see more videos like this in the future. If you are wondering what kind of previous knowledge is required for building this machine learning project, don't worry, this project is entirely beginner friendly. No in-depth machine learning is required. Think of this as your first machine learning project. In this video, we'll be going through three steps. First off, we'll be reading and exporting our data with pandas so that we can see if there are any missing values or so. Second, we'll prepare our data for machine learning. Finally, third step is we'll train our machine learning model with our data and reach regression model from scikit-learn library and we'll even evaluate how our model has performed. For a data set, I looked up to the Kaggle and if you come here to the data set section in the left uh, left sidebar. Let's search for weather and we can see these results. Quite a lot of number of data sets that are out of. Uh, and even though like this first one is not updated since two years ago, usability seems to be 10. And there are quite a lot of number of like upvotes. So let's have a look inside how it goes. There seems to be like Precipitation columns, maximum temperature column, probably during the day, and minimum temperature during the day. So this seems to be a Seattle weather. So let's actually have a look at here. And let's use this as our data set. You can download it from here, from the download button. And after downloading the data set, let's jump back to our Google Call app and here in this button, uh, in the left side, we can upload our data set from upload button here. So after uploading the data set, let's get started by importing pandas, which will help us to manipulate our data. Next thing we are going to do here is let's write this line of code here, read CSVs from pandas and helping us to read our data set into variable name weather. And SeattleWeather.csv is a data set, data set that we have just downloaded from Kaggle and uploaded here. After running this, let's actually run this. Uh, we have also specified the index column as well as a date. We'll see later like how specifying date as an index column is helping us. Now let's run a new cell called weather. Let's run this. And as you can see, there are like precipitation column, date column that we have seen earlier from our data set and maximum temperature, minimum temperature and other wind and weather column de details as well. So here is an example of how we can use index. If you want to see data for only first day of 2012, we can do this. Here, Lock is helping us to do that. Or if you want to look at data for specific range, let's say from like January of 2012, we can also do that. Uh, setting our index as a date makes it really, really easy to get slice of our data uh, for specific date ranges. Now we have read our data and explored it a little bit. I think we are ready to go into the next step, which is cleaning our data to get it ready for machine learning. And most machine learning al algorithms don't deal well with ma missing values. 
So first thing we are gonna do is to see if there are any missing values and fixing them. So now let's find which columns have missing values. We can do that using apply method on weather data frame and we'll pass in pandas is null function here, as you can see. And we have dot sum here, which will give us total number of null values in each column. So let's run this and see our data. Oh, this is interesting that we don't have any missing values. This seems to be a really perfect data set, which doesn't happen all the time in the real world. And actually, when we download the data set, usability was 10. Maybe that's why we don't have any missing values in this data set. So let's go ahead. Now, if you have a look back to our data set, we have five columns, precipitation, maximum temperature, mean temperature, wind, and weather. For this project, let's only use first three columns and as well as our data as well, index column, of course. And let's delete our wind and weather columns. And we can do that by using Dell. Now let's see our data set again by running a new cell on weather. If we run this, we can see we have this data set now. Next thing we are going to do is to take a look at our data types. In a machine learning algorithm, uh, it's really imp important that values we are using to make predictions are numerical. And now let's see our data types. We can do that by using D types. Let's run this. As you can see, uh, like our data types are numerical, which is great. We can also have a look at our index to make sure that it's also right data type. Our index at this point uh, is just an object, as you can see from here, which means it's being treated as a string. But these are dates, so we can actually convert this to a date time index. So. Here we'll be using uh, we'll be using pandas to date time uh, function to turn our index to date time index, and now let's have a look at this and let's have a look at our index again. As you can see, like it's now been converted to date time index, and soon we'll see the power of date time index versus just a regular index. One of the cool things we can do with date time index is we can subset. So if you want to look at things by year, we can say weather.index.year and it will just give us years. So we can do like this. So uh, we can do the same for other parts of data as well. For example, if you want to see just months, let's uh, write it months and let's run this. We can see like it returns us months as well. It will subset us. This will be very useful when dealing with this kind of machine learning tasks, such as if you want to see uh, average monthly temperature or average annual temperature. And now let's do some analysis just to see what's going on with our data. So here let's visualize, let's visualize maximum temperature and minimum temperature during the day. We can do that by using plot, as you can see here. All right, this looks nice. And now let's also have a look at precipitation levels using plot as we, that, as we just did before. Here, as we can see, everything looks good. This was just a little bit of exploration into our data. So now I think we are ready to train our machine learning model. Great, we've come a long way. Now, first thing we'll be doing is to figure out what we'll be predicting. In this case, we are going to predict tomorrow's maximum temperature using historical data. So let's create a target for that. Uh, we are doing that using shift method. Shift negative one will pull every row back one position. What this here will do is create a column with tomorrow's temperature. And uh, so let's have a look actually in this. Let's run weather. We can see that there's a target column here. Uh, it's a maximum temperature for uh, for tomorrow. For example, if you look at January 1st here, uh, target is tomorrow's maximum temperature. 
All right, so we set, set up a target. Now here we can see that there's a missing value here in the last row because there is no tomorrow's data to use here. So let's get rid of that row. Uh, to get rid of get rid of that row, we can use iLock. Uh, let's create it here and let's run weather one more time. Oops, I had an error. Yeah, here it is. So it's nice. Cool. Now let's import our machine learning model from scikit-learn. We are going to use ridge regression for today, which is a type of a regression model that minimizes overfitting. So let's add it. We are setting the alpha here, which is a parameter that controls how much the coefficients of a regression model is penalized. And the greater the penalty is, the more overfitting is prevented. So don't worry too much about this parameter right now. We'll just pass in alpha equals 0.1. Uh, here we imported bridge regression, as you can see. So let's run this. After running this, it should have imported our model and initialized it to variable called track. Next thing we are going to do is to create a list called predictors. So we are really explicit about what variables we are using to predict the target. Today we'll be using precipitation, maximum temperature for a given day, and minimum temperature for that day. So let's run this as well. And now after running that, we'll split our data into training set and test set. So we are doing it here by saying to June 30, 2015, this will be training set. And after that date will be our test set. This kind of split is really important when you are using time series data. What we shouldn't be do, what we shouldn't be doing is to use the data from future to predict the past. So we should always make sure we are using previous data to predict future data, not the other way around. So let's run this. So after splitting the data into training and test set, let's go ahead and fit this model to our data and then make some predictions. We can do this using fit method here on our regression model and we'll fit to our training data set with our predictors and we'll try to predict our target. So let's run this cell. So our model has been fit and now we can generate some predictions and we'll generate predictions on our test data set using predictor columns. After running this, we have our predictions. All right, once we have our predictions, we can see how well our model did. We are using mean absolute error to do that here. If you are not familiar with this term, mean absolute error, don't worry. You can think of it just as a difference between actual value and predicted temperature value. So here target is our actual value and we have here predictions. So let's run this and let's see what our uh, mean absolute error was. Okay, so here, as you can see, uh, this means on average, we were 2.1 degrees of an actual temperature. Not bad, but of course, there's a lot of room that we can improve our accuracy. Now we have generated our predictions and seen how well it did. So let's also combine actual temperature and predicted temperature values it's so useful to do this in machine learning applications because you, because you can see actual and predicted values side by side. It helps to see where there is a big difference, if any. Here we are using concat method to do that from pandas. And also we have to convert our predictions to pandas series here, as you can see. Uh, otherwise, it's a NumPy array. And also in the last line of code here, as you can see, we have renamed our columns so it becomes easier for us to see. So let's run this. Let's also come to the new cell and run combined. Nice. You can see actual and predicted values side by side. We can also plot it here and we can have a visual look at our actual and predicted values.
here as you can see like there are some values here uh, that's actually predicted way lower than the actual value and in the other cases where in this part like it's predicted way higher than its actual value value before wrapping up this project tutorial let's have a look at coefficients of regression model to see how are the different variables are using are uh, being used by the model it looks like uh, first variable which is precipitation doesn't affects that much to the maximum temperature of the coming day and about this one i think this was maximum temperature during the previous day of course like this affects highly to the uh, maximum temperature for tomorrow and this is the minimum temperature how it affects to the our predictions if you are here until this part of tutorial and it has helped you i'm really happy for that now you can build your own weather prediction project with machine learning. Before mo moving on to close this, it would be so helpful if you could subscribe, like, and click on the notifications bell to stay informed with my upcoming projects and tutorials like this. Also, if you'd like to see more of a machine learning project, I suggest checking out my other video on Apple stock prediction with machine learning. As always, thank you and see you next time.